Everybody, welcome to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. I am John Clark. He is Ike Reese. That's Mike Quick. And there's great vibes around these Eagles. They're trying to start 3-0 against Washington for the first time in six years. Carson Wentz was the quarterback then with the Eagles. Now he's with Washington. There are so many good vibes around this Eagles team right now. When you're driving home after Monday night beating the Vikings the way they did, what are you feeling and thinking? Guys, I was just thinking about how well everything worked the efficiency and the variety in which they played this football game. If you look at Shane Steichen and all the play calls, he had to keep the defense off balance. They had the inside zone, the outside zone, the pistol. They did so many things, and I think the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, went 10 passes before an incompletion. They were so efficient. They had so much variety, and I thought about it during the game. I said, there's so many layers to this onion. And that was the offense. They just gave them so much to think about. And I thought defensively, when you go from week one to week two, week one, I thought our biggest issue on the defense is we struggled to make plays when we were in position to make plays. Mainly tackling, securing the ball carry. You go back to that game Monday night against Minnesota, Dalvin Cook had nowhere to run the football. TJ Edwards was all over the field making tackles. And then the gang tackling, not just one guy, everyone getting to the ball carrier. Whenever Minnesota's playmakers did get the ball in their hands, there was very few yards after they got the ball. And that's because the Eagles tackling was so much better. And not just from individuals, but primarily as a team, they tackle better on defense. And our friend Duffy, he had the stat. Kirk Cousins, 0 for 6 against the zero blitz. And how about the coverage? That is what Fran Duffy is breaking down here on Tape Study, presented by Chickies and Pete's. This week here on Tape Study, presented by Chickies and Pete's, I want to take a look back at last week's game plan against the Minnesota Vikings from defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon. And really, it comes down to two aspects of this game plan. Number one, be hyper aggressive, send a lot of pressure, a lot of heat at quarterback Kirk Cousins, make him uncomfortable. Number two, don't let number 18, Justin Jefferson, beat you. We talked about it all last week on this show. It's exactly how we closed last week's show. You have to find a way to limit Justin Jefferson. The Eagles did that in this game, and it really came with a variety of coverages, both man and zone. No matter where he lined up, inside or, in, or out wide, the Eagles had answers for him in the secondary. And one of the things I really liked that they did on third down especially, we saw two really well-executed reps of double coverage, true double coverage, which is not common in the NFL. And this is exactly what it looks like. It's a version of cover one, where you're going to have a single high safety rotate to the middle of the field. That's going to be Kayvon Wallace on this rep. Here you're going to see Marcus Epps with eyes. Look where he's looking. He's looking to the outside. That's Justin Jefferson lined up with Darius Slay. Darius Slay, before this snap, he is lined up in aggressive press man coverage. And what that's going to allow him to do is be very physical early in the route and then put himself in position to trail Justin Jefferson. Anything that he's got breaking back towards the line of scrimmage, that's going to be all Darius Slay. And if there's anything over the top, well, now that's going to be the responsibility of Marcus Epps. But regardless, you've got four eyeballs on Justin Jefferson at all times. And if you are going to do this, if you're going to play this way defensively, that means that your other nine defenders they have got to win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. And if you look here at this play, the Eagles defense does a great job across the board because Kirk Cousins, he wants to hit Justin Jefferson first. He's looking at him on the left side of the field. What he wants next is the running back out of the backfield and responsible for him is Kaiser White. Kaiser White does an outstanding job playing through contact here. Does a nice job playing over those rub routes, gets Kirk Cousins off this route. So he can't throw this to the running back. His next progression, it's the tight end, Irv Smith Jr. James Bradbury is smothering him in coverage, gets the pass break up on third down, and the Eagles defense gets off the field. You go a little bit later in the game, you get the same exact defensive play call. Once again, you've got dime personnel on the field, six defensive backs. Here's Darius Slay. Once again, an aggressive press man coverage against Justin Jefferson. Once again, you've got Marcus Epps shaded to that side of the field. So it is a true double team of Justin Jefferson on third down. Now, what happens here on this play? Well, you're going to have Avante Max be very aggressive. James Bradbury be very aggressive. Really tight man coverage on that side of the field. Kirk Cousins, he's not even going to bother looking at Justin Jefferson. Jefferson. You can see that Slay already has him locked up. All this tight coverage on the outside, 
that creates a lot of time for the defensive line to get home. And that's exactly what Fletcher Cox does. He's able to push the pocket. And you get a sack fumble here on third down. The Eagles defense finding a way to get off the field on third down was a huge theme in this game. And you saw tight coverage and you saw good pressure. And some of that pressure was with the four man rush, like what we saw in that last play. But often we saw cover zero blitz. This is time and time again, especially in the second half. Six rushers, an all out blitz with zero man coverage behind. Basically what that means is you've got man to man across the board. And that's what you saw a number of times here in the second half. The Eagles being very, very aggressive. And you can see there's no safety help. Five versus five in the secondary. That means you're gonna have a free runner. And look at Kirk Cousins. He's already trying to get rid of this football. That allows Darius Slay to play with his eyes in the backfield. He's gonna make sure that Justin Jefferson doesn't break inside. And now he's just gonna make a play on the football. We saw it time and time again. This interception, a culmination of blitz after blitz after blitz on Kirk Cousins. The Eagles defense, again, in summation, that game plan on Monday night was about pressuring quarterback Kirk Cousins and about locking down Justin Jefferson. One week, mission accomplished here for this Eagles defense. Eagles game plan is brought to you by your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Novacare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi. PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why. There was different uh, disguises. There were different coverages, but make no mistake about it, it was it was to it was a lot of it was to stop number 18. Uh, he's a heck of a football player. When Slay had to cover him one on one, obviously he did an unbelievable job. When you when you bring all the guys that on Slay's uh, second interception, there's no help when you bring all those guys, right? You're in cover zero, and and Slay got sticky in the coverage and, and made an interception. And so and that's what we see Slay do, you know, over and over again. That's why he's one of our captains. The way he plays the the way he studies, the way he leads. All right, there's Nick Sirianni breaking down Slay's second interception. He had two interceptions. Justin Jefferson was held to one catch and seven yards and two interceptions when Slay was on him. What did you see with the first interception? Well, listen, this was the primetime matchup. Everybody was going to keep their eyes glued to. And Darius, big play Slay, <laughs> shouldn't be surprised. He was up for the challenge. Let's look at this first interception down here in the red zone. You watch this coverage here. We got a little bit of a matchup zone. Once number two clears and in Chauncey Gardner-Johnson goes with him, Darius Slay knows he pretty much has Justin Jefferson all to himself. And what I like about this from Slay is that you notice the patience that he has when he's backpedaling. His feet are quiet. And what I mean by that is he's not all, not all over the place. He's ready at this route is a seven route to the outside. If it's a comeback route, he's ready to drive on it. And like this play, he understands because he has one eye on Kirk Cousins as well, that this is where Cousins wants to go with the football. He anticipates that he's able to jump underneath Justin Jefferson and pick this pass off. I think that's free snap film study that he doesn't have to feel panicked or rushed to make a move. He's just sitting there anticipating great play from the veteran corner, great interception. Darius Slate locked in throughout this game, had two interceptions, could have been three or four. That guy was so locked in, so ready for this game. And I think you have, have to give a lot of credit to Denard Wilson, that defensive backs coach, for prepping these guys, getting them ready, and Slay, boy, that guy can play football. Yeah, yeah he he's earned the, he's earned the Twitter handle big play slay with he that. Is, he is big play, and, and he tied his career high with five passes defense, and that is going to come in handy facing Carson Wentz. He's averaging 325 passing yards a game, second best in the NFL. So how do the Eagles defend that? Here is Enemy Intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. There is no question that this Washington Commanders pass game through two weeks has been very good. They put up yards, they put up points. Carson Wentz has played well. Now what they've done a lot of is move their receivers around. A lot of movable chess pieces who can line up anywhere and create matchups. And one player who really stands out through the first two weeks on film is Curtis Samuel. This is what they expected when they got him. He is a player that can line up all over the formation, including the backfield. 
And there was a great example of that last week against the Detroit Lions in the high red zone. You'll see here that Samuel is lined up offset in the backfield to the boundary, the short side of the field. And the wide receiver to that side, the boundary X, is Terry McLaurin. Now notice the defensive front for the Lions. It's a five-man front, something we've seen from the Eagles and something that they will do. It's part of their foundation. But the route concept here against man coverage really breaks down the coverage because McLaurin will run inside, taking the corner with him. Samuel, out of the backfield, will run the wheel route or the rail route. And now, because of the five-man front, the player that has to run with him is a defensive end, and that is a major matchup advantage for the commanders. It's a beautifully designed play that ends up being a touchdown. So Curtis Samuel is one player that the Eagles defense must be aware of. He can line up all over. So this is an offense that brings a lot of weapons to the table and presents a significant challenge for the Eagles defense. All right, so Washington has Terry McLaurin, Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson. Carson Wentz has a good set of receivers to throw to. Carson has been in intercepted three times. He's been sacked six times, and the blitzes worked against Kirk Cousins. You saw TJ Edwards coming up the gut once or twice. Do you think we're going to see more of that or more of what we saw against the Lions? Well, it all depends on what's working when the game starts early. I always think blitzing is something that is predicated on whether or not you're having success with your four-man rush or not. And yeah, you can take advantage of some opportunities there to bring some extra guys. But every time you do that, you leave an opportunity for that offense to make plays against you as well. So I'll tell you, as a defensive coordinator, you want to be able to get to the quarterback with just your four-man rush. But if you have to bring the extra guy and it's a benefit to you, why not? I mean, the Eagles certainly have that variety in their defense. I just love the fact that they don't necessarily have to rely on it to get pressure, but it's there available for them. John, this is what he's saying. You always go into the game with a plan, but that <laughs> plan doesn't always work. Like Mike Tyson said. You're punched in the face. Yeah, you get hit in the <laughs> mouth and you change your game plan well. In this game, you go in with a plan, but if Carson starts to carve away at that plan, then you change things up a little bit. You know, he has the stuff inside of him to ascend and, and to be great. And he lives the theory of getting better every day. And that's why you're seeing major improvements, because of the, the type of person and the type of player he is. He is special. There is nothing that this young quarterback is incapable of. Hurts fakes, and he's in for the touchdown. Jalen Hurts is making every throw imaginable. Nice throw by Hurts. Launch downfield. Watkins wide open. Touchdown. Coming into the season with a lot more confidence is reflected in everything he does. Keeps fighting for the end zone. What a run. Touchdown. Big time performance in a big time stage. All right, so Jalen Hurts had a career high 84% completion percentage. Only Nick Foles in two different games had a higher completion percentage in Eagles history. There were so many plays to choose from Monday night. What's your favorite? What do you want to break down? There are so many plays to choose from. You're exactly right. But this one play in particular, it really shows you where this team is. Jalen Hurts, you got him in a third and 13 situation. And if you think back the week before in Detroit, he burned Detroit on a lot of third down situations by running the football. Well, Minnesota's concerned about that. It's a four-man rush, but it's really not a, a four-man rush on the play. If you watch Darius Smith on this play, he's actually watching the quarterback, so concerned about Jalen Hurts hurting them. He's got a clean pocket. He steps up and he delivers his curl route down the field to Brown. An excellent play. On the third and 13, many times you're just wanting a screen or a draw to try and get a little bit closer, but a lot of confidence shown here in this offense, and it's well picked up. It's a really good play, and it really shows you where this team is right now. Well, and Washington is going to come after him. They're top 10 in blitzing, top five in the NFL in stunts, and they have most QB hits in the NFL. So watch out, Jalen. He can escape with his legs. We've seen him do that. With more on that front and what Washington's going to bring, here's Enemy Intel with Greg Cosell, presented by Golden Nugget Jewelers. This week, the Eagles will play a Washington Commanders defense that quite frankly has not lived up to expectations given some of the talent that they have on that side of the ball. Now in any given week, that talent can be really difficult to play against, particularly the defensive front. 
So here's something we've seen the commanders do quite a bit of. They line up in what we call a loaded front with three defensive linemen to one side of the center. And what they do here is they put Jamin Davis as the stand-up three technique to the opposite side. And they're going to run what we call a long stunt, which means Davis, he will loop around two defensive linemen. It will be Payne the one technique and Allen the three technique. This is really, really difficult to pick up for an offensive line. And Davis does a really good job by initially stepping outside before looping back inside and no one picks him up as he sacks the quarterback. And the key thing here is it's quick. The pressure gets on Jared Goff right away before he almost has a chance to see it. So while this defense has not played particularly well through two games for the Eagles offense, and the Eagles have a very, very good offensive line, but there's a recognition factor involved, and that's what they're going to have to be aware of in this matchup with the Commanders. Yeah, that Washington pressure scheme has been good in their first two games. So the question is with the Eagles offense, how do you get your playmakers out there in space? Well, they have a lot of variety in this offense. They do so many things with moving guys around. And I love what they're doing with Devontae Smith. You know, he's out wide, he's in the slot. He really works well from the slot. They go empty and they get him in a slot position and you could have a linebacker on him. You could have somebody, a DN walked out on him. There's so many varieties to this thing. And when he has these choice routes from the slot, he's automatically gonna get open because wherever the opening spot is, he understands and he'll get to those spots. And if you can hold up against that front, you can take advantage of this Washington back seven. There's a lot of communication issues with that back four in the secondary. You see blown coverages all over the place. Eagles were able to take advantage of Minnesota when they blew a coverage with Quez Watkins for a 53-yard touchdown. I don't think Washington can fix all of their issues in one week. And these are things that showed up last week versus Detroit. This is where the Eagles can take advantage. If they can hold up in protection and give Jalen and these skill position guys the time to operate, there's a lot of explosive plays that will be available for this offense. Hey, welcome back to Eagles Game Plan presented by Toyota. And Monday night, Jalen Hurts had 301 total yards in the first half against the Vikings. That is the most in a first half since Michael Vick in Washington 12 years ago. And you brought that up on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. Did it remind you of that performance a little bit? It really did. And from the standpoint of how Jalen Hurts was operating from the quarterback position, whether it was on the ground, whether it was through the air, he seemingly couldn't be stopped in that first half. Uh, last week versus Minnesota. And it took me back to that Monday night down in Washington where Andy and, and Mike, they came out first play of the game. And it was 80 something yards to Deshaun Jackson. And it opened up the floodgates to where I saw a half of football like I had never seen before when you watch that uh, Eagles offense. And that's just what I felt last week. It just felt like uh, Jalen, anything he did was gonna work Monday night. And for the first half, it certainly did. Oh, I had a similar feeling, too. <laughs> you know, watching that game, you talk about the Michael Vick game with Deshaun Jackson and all those guys down in Washington Monday Night Football. Fireworks were all over the place. I felt the same way in the Monday Night game here against the Minnesota Vikings that this is an offense that has so many ways that they can beat a defense that it's hard to stop them. They went for oh, almost 500 yards of total offense. They didn't really score in the second half, but I think they would have if they really needed to. I really enjoyed the Monday night game, and it really, just like you said, it took me back to the Monday nighter down in Washington. Well, let's pack it up and take it on the road to Washington once again. Jalen Hurts is second in the NFL in total yards. The Eagles have beaten Washington eight of the last ten times. All right, thank you very much for watching Eagles Game Plan once again, presented by Toyota. He's Ike Reese. He's Mike Quick. I'm John Clark. Enjoy game week. Eagles Game Plan is brought to you by... Your local Tri-State Toyota dealers, proud automotive partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. NovaCare Rehabilitation, the power of physical therapy. Pepsi, Eagles watching, better with Pepsi. PA Lottery, there's a lot of love for the PA Lottery, and when you see how fun it is, you'll understand why.